This is the first band I've ever been in, which is a true democracy. And I thought about that a lot. And I think one of the things is that, in, certainly in the early days, Leonardo was the leader. <laughs> and we four were working for Leonardo. So it was almost like Leonardo was the band leader because he put it together. There again, you talk about conscious decisions. None of this would have happened without Leonardo. Mm -hmm. You know, there was a meeting in 19, date-wise, I'm not sure, around 1991, Elton Dean, John Marshall, myself and Dill Katz with some idea of reforming Soft Machine uh, with that lineup. No we keyboard had, player. We had one meeting uh, with a sort of incredibly unenthusiastic atmosphere and, and I never heard anything more about it. But then Leonardo decided, first of all it was Softworks with Alan, and as soon as I heard that was going to happen I thought well first of all I should be, not to do with any quality of playing, but I should be in that band because, you know, Alan's got his solo thing and also he's living in Los Angeles and, mm. and I was expecting the call, you know, because I knew Alan wouldn't do it for very long and uh, I thought if they're going to carry on, which I'd love to do, I'd love to do that. And Hugh came and see me. I didn't even know Hugh. He came and saw me at the Vortex and <coughs> immediately liked him very much. Elton I knew. So there were a couple of calls I'd already had when I think they couldn't get hold of Alan or something. I think Elton, I remember Elton phoning up saying, oh, are you available to go to Italy or something? I went, yeah, he said, we can't get hold of Alan or something. I said, well, OK, whatever. And then, so finally, uh, um, that, so then we renamed it Soft Machine Legacy. So that was the next, if you like, the next sort of incarnation of Softworks. <coughs> but right immediately, it was all um, very democratic in the sense that uh, Leonardo was the boss. So, <laughs> and, and that's the only band I've ever been in uh, that it's been like that. It still is, really. Still, still democratic. Uh, because it wasn't democratic in the 70s, it was Carl Jenkins' band, you know, uh, uh, which was the reality, not, not the explicit reality, but the implicit reality, was that Carl was running the band. And I had no problem with that, but I mean, that was, a, that was one of the issues that was going around, flowing around the band, you know. And there was nobody really to challenge him as a composer, uh, unless you were... Well, no, no, but he wouldn't, you know, the, I wasn't encouraged to compose. I was only encouraged to write the one guitar piece for each album. But Mike Ratledge, wonderful composer. And, uh, you know, Mike Ratledge to me is really, I mean, some of those tunes that are really, really good. I mean, Man Who Waved at Trains, oh, what a lovely tune, it's fantastic and quirky. Some of his, the one or two tunes of his that, that I've listened to a little bit derivative, but a lot of his tunes are really special. And uh, he was being discouraged, you see. And uh, he was discouraged, he wanted to leave, and so he wasn't coming up with much material. So Carl was really writing it all, and certainly, I'm sort of quite compliant, you know, when it comes to writing. So it wasn't like I'd go, oh, I've got this tune. It was like, you write, it was when we did the Soft album, they said, oh yes, you're the guitarist, right, so you do one piece mm -hmm. on acoustic guitar at yeah. the end. So I wrote that tune, Atika, which actually is a good tune, I like it. I played it with Patrice Mayer. <laughs> he yeah. made me relearn it. I was glad he made, and I had to relearn it. I had to completely start from scratch. I thought, what is this tune? What are these chords? It's got all these kind of chords that go around. And I thought, this is not bad, actually.
So I always remember what Babington said to me over the years, because he comes out, he suddenly says something <laughs> quite sort of like, you go, oh. And I remember when he heard that, he said, hmm, hmm, nine out of 10 for composition and five out of 10 for execution. Because it, it, it is a little bit scruffy, the execution. But he said, he, he, so he complimented me on the composition. <laughs> 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 Which admittedly is quite good because Babington's old school. He doesn't he doesn't doesn't give out compliments very easily. <laughs> uh, just as an aside, you were mentioning uh, your liking of of Mike Rattledge's material. Yeah, uh, you're still in touch with Mike. Yes. Uh, I don't know if you ever speak about these things, but do you think he has any pride of of uh, about the music that he wrote at the time, or is it completely? Rejected it. I don't know. He seems to have rejected the whole of that part of his life, which is a shame. Although, once I phoned him up and said, "Oh man, you know, I've just heard a bit of you playing on was there the album from Ronnie's where he plays acoustic piano, mm -hmm. somewhere in Soho." Yeah. And I thought it was great, and I actually phoned him up and said, "Fantastic!" And he went, "It's the first time you've ever given me a compliment." <laughs> so uh, right, well, because that you know. And I do, I do tell him we're playing his tunes and they're really good and Chloe and the Pirates, I mean, they're great tunes, really. Yeah. Well, great is an overdone word, but I mean, they're very, very interesting. And sometimes, you know, as some of the material we were doing would, you know, at that time, I mean, the great things like Tales of Taliesin, I think, they really hold up. You know, the Softs album really does hold up. So I think Jenkins' compositions have got really got something. Different kind of thing, though. Mm -hmm. They're more orderly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>